Former Deputy Leader Ben Habib of Reform sensationally quit the party uh, yesterday. On the same day, it gained its 100th uh, thousand member, uh, Dame Andrea Jenkins. Uh, Nigel Farage founded... Uh, or responded. Why did I say founded? Oh, I'm dyslexic. Uh, well, he did found the party. He did, yeah. Uh, and I he responded by calling uh, Ben bitter. He said it was a good day and this was the absolute icing on the cake, 100,000 members. Um, ben, now, as you probably know, Ben, Nigel is a very good friend of mine and been a friend of mine for over 30 years. And I've, I've got you coming on today. I know you want to have your say, but I... I want to work today as a peacemaker between you. you and Nigel. So, you know... Uh, Probably won't work, but uh, let's have a go. I, I mean, <laughs> is there any way I can get you two into a room and have a little chat? Well, can I just say that there's nothing personal between me and Nigel. I think Nigel has done tremendous things for the United Kingdom. We wouldn't have got the referendum on leaving the EU if it wasn't for Nigel. He's done a Mm. tremendous amount for legitimising a belief in the nation-state that is the United Kingdom yeah. to promoting British interests. It's not about me and Nigel. It's th There are a couple of things, really. Uh, principally, the structure of the party Reform UK, which is a limited liability company, 60% owned by Nigel. And I just think that if you aspire to be the government of the United Kingdom, and particularly if you aspire to be a government that believes in democracy, you can't be promoting the democratic voice of the British people when it comes to governing the United but Kingdom. As far as but, I know, that yeah. is changing, and it may even have already changed, um, that he's already said publicly he doesn't want to carry on running it the way he has been. He did that so he could get into the election, which was called very quickly. He had no intention of going back into politics. I know uh, that he was very keen and uh, he wanted to carry on his uh, media career. And so I'm sure there's, you know, I'm sure he probably agrees with you uh, that a government cannot be run by a particular a company. You're absolutely right. But how so would that actually change things? If it got, say you got voted into government, what would it change in the in the the party? I mean, you could well, still get rid of a leader, couldn't you? Even though he owned it. Well, well shareholders get... could. Well, well but the if it's in government, is... it'd be a democracy, wouldn't it? Oh, you can get, the people can get rid of the leader, but there wouldn't be any checks and balances and accountability. And in my view, uh, the whole point is that you wouldn't ever get into government mm. if you don't properly set up Reform UK. Yeah. And the reason for that is that you need <clears throat> the ability for people's voices to come forward to the leadership and you need good candidates. And I think that only happens if the party is got some form of look there's no perfect democracy you know you, we know that but you've got to have something beyond yeah. one but individual ben, owning it we like you ben you're a, a nice guy but this comes across as just being a little bit bitter against nigel and the way That's what that he you were said. treated he, he said you were bitter and and i it. am sure that you would be of great benefit to the party and nigel has said he is going to change it he is actually going uh, and I thought he'd already done it, or he's in the process of doing he, he it. He hasn't done it. Yeah. So one of my bugbears, well, I've got a couple of bugbears on, on what's happened in terms of the democratisation of the party. Two things. The first is that Zayar Youssef, the new chairman, said that he had the finest legal minds in the United Kingdom working day and night on producing a new constitution. Actually, when the document arrived, it was a document I'd rejected a year and a half ago, it, in my view, hadn't had any why, legal minds. Why, why go public with this, Ben? The thing that I don't understand is you are making yourself look a little bit bitter about this, or, or, well, or very bitter. If you go public, why don't you talk to the people sort of privately about this and see if you can get some kind of understanding? Because I think, you know, had you won your seat at the election that you stood for, I think you'd be quite happy and you'd still be in reform. And I think perhaps part of no, the problem is that you, you didn't win no, your seat. No, that's not right. I mean, I've gone public, but Richard Tice will testify and many others, including Nigel, would testify that I've been banging on about this issue for a, at least a couple of years, if not longer than that. 
and I've been doing it privately. Yeah. I've been I, the, w when Richard Ties approached me in November 2022. But you're damaging uh, think... reform, and it's a party you still say you you've got some respect for. It's the only party that seems to be getting public opinion, um, and you know as well as I do, Nigel's a pretty forceful guy, and he's pretty pretty good at what he does. I mean, every time I see. Uh, politicians talking they have a handful of paper or they're reading off an auto cue and they they can't think uh on the spot and and you mm. can do that as well i i i just think this is very damaging and not entirely good for you as well as the party well right. it's not about me i couldn't i honestly so just a couple of things i'm in politics because i fear for the united kingdom mm -hmm. i think that the united kingdom is facing it's extinction if we don't change the way that we govern ourselves constitutionally, democratically, culturally, economically, we're in trouble. And it's not about me. I'm not in it to be deputy leader. Okay. So where next by... where next for Ben Abbey? Because you're politically just, stateless, just, just, you've got to be in that. something. What what so, listen sorry yeah. Ben, let's let's do it this properly. What yeah. are you thinking? Are you thinking of starting another political party if you don't think the parties are gonna say no. you say you, so, we're gonna yeah. lose the United Kingdom? I don't actually think we will. Those people who want sort of independence for Scotland and Wales are not the brightest, I don't think, in the uh, in the box. And I think the vast majority of people in this country see the benefit of the United Kingdom. But, oh, but you know, we've already got a border down the Irish Sea. Our political class is so weak mm. that they weren't able to resist the pressure from the European Union and those amongst us who would do our own country down. But, uh, and put a border between Great Britain and Northern Ireland. We have a Supreme Court ruling mm. as a result of a court case I brought, which says that the Act of Union that created the United Kingdom of okay. Great Britain right. and Northern Ireland... Would, you would, know, so listen. we're a country that is really under siege. Okay. Would, you, yeah. would you consider joining the Conservative Party and trying to change the way they work? So for me, it is... It doesn't matter which party or how, how it's yeah, done. Well, how are we going to go I, forward on this? So if, from yeah, your point so of view, what are we going to do to Where's Ben Habib it? going? Yeah, so I'm going to go through a period of reflection at the moment. Ideally, I would have stayed in reform. Absolutely, you know, if Nigel had democratised, he hasn't done it, as he said he would do it. Well, he will is do the it. short answer. He will do well, it. So why he, not leave I, it for I, a little I, longer until it's all I, sorted out? I, I've been hearing that for years. I've been hearing well, it that hasn't for years, been going James. for years, but I mean, why? It has. Why? It's been going since 2019. Actually. Why? Yeah, but you but, know, when the time is yeah. right, I'm sure he will do it because having a, a private company like this is not the best way to go forward because people like you are saying what you're saying, and I'm I'm sure that it will change. But you know, sort of taking your bat home or whatever the expression is, um, I'm I'm just worried that you are going to sort of cause problems and we're going to be even more diverse than we are now that we're not going to get enough people uh to to think sensibly they're going to say well maybe ben's right maybe not and then we're going to have three parties that mean we hardly ever get a government we've got a government now that hasn't well, really I think got nigel go on i mean the reality is nigel nigel owns that space yeah. reform uk owns the space that could deliver the United Kingdom away from the precipice on which I think we are currently standing. And Nigel needs to move at speed. He needs to democratise, he needs to get a broad base of people, that he, get, he needs to get the best minds and the best orators <clears throat> from our side of the debate and push them forward and actually mount the fight against so the what you're So what you're really but, saying, Ben, is, is, you know, what you're really saying is I'm a really good guy and I'm really clever and I should have been left in reform Form and them no, throwing me out is, is making no, them no. look stupid. They didn't throw me out. I, I well, left. no, you left. Uh, yeah, what do you yeah, think of the I, direction of travel of reform since they got their well, five I seats? Mean, what do you think about that? Well, well, one of the issues I've got is Nigel seems quite obsessed, if I may say so, of recruiting Tories. So he wrote a letter to 1,300 odd Tory councillors the other day saying, those who are coming up for election in May, saying, don't take your risk with the Conservative Party, join Reform UK. And I'm in touch with the grassroots of Reform UK. Okay. And, th and, and they were looking at this letter thinking, well, you know, we're the grassroots of Reform UK. We are the movement. We created the opportunity which put the five people in Parliament. And now, and you need now, the Tories, though, right? You need you, them to you, defend. No, but we don't. Yeah, the Tories not. are what took us 
the Tories are what took us into this problem. Right. Yeah. There are some but really real fantastic Tories. 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 There are there are some fantastic <laughs> Tories. So what you're, you're to, to finish, yeah. I'm running out of time. What you're basically saying Sorry. is that reform is not right wing enough for you. No, reform isn't. Uh, it's not a party that is structured appropriately in order to be able to deliver the ideology that's required to save the country. It needs to restructure. It's but a it's critical going, I'm sure, to restructure. And will you well, then feel that perhaps you, you jumped ship, if you like, too soon? If, if reform restructures, if reform uh, therefore has the ability and does get the right people coming forward, I'll be happy to go back to my day job. I'm only in politics because I fear for the country. I don't want to be in politics. I'm not That's bitter. exactly the same reason that Nigel will tell you. He, will, he, will, he didn't want to go back into politics, but he realised something needs to be done. And let's be fair, be honest, he is the only guy who's actually uh, had people take notice of him. He's responsible, along with the party, the Brexit party and everything else, uh, of getting us out of the European dictatorship. He's probably made, made more of an impact on people's lives in this country than any He's other politician. Politician in the last in the, in the <coughs> ben, ben, we're going to talk He's again, but. I